I recognize the gentleman from, from California, Mr. Harley Ruda, for questions. Thank you, Chairwoman, and thank you for convening this very important hearing. Uh, I'm anxious to bring it back to the bipartisan purposes that we're all here for, and uh, thank you for all the witnesses for your testimony as well. I know some of the previous testimony talked about how we have uh, seen with recent surveys and polling that many of our teenagers don't uh, fully understand uh, what occurred in World War II, what occurred in the Holocaust, what occurred with the, uh, the rise of Hitler. And in my district, we have seen firsthand the consequences of this ignorance. In my district, a young college student was murdered by a high school acquaintance who had joined a far-right neo-Nazi group. In my district, teens played a drinking game around cups arranged in a swastika and bragged about German engineering on social media. In my district, members of a water polo team held their hands up in a Nazi salute while singing a German Nazi propaganda song. In my district, synagogues have been desecrated while neo-Nazi recruitment flyers appear again and again on the campuses of high schools and colleges. In my district, watermelons have been thrown on the front steps of African-American students. In my district, it is not uncommon to see white suprem supremacy flags flying behind cars and trucks as they travel across the roads and highways on our, in our district. In the aftermath of many of these incidents, what we have seen is encouraging. The Southern California uh, Jewish community did something incredible. They embraced the teens that uh, have been involved in some of these incidents and educated them. They sat down with kids with Eva Schloss, the stepsister of Anne Frank, invited them into their synagogues and helped them understand what had transpired, showing very clearly how important uh, education and elimination of ignorance is. And, and I want to turn to Dr. Friedberg, who serves as a historian at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Can you tell us why this education is so important, not just for teenagers here in the United States, but for all of us in the United States and across the globe. Thank you, Congressman, and I wish you didn't have such a long list um, to give. Um, it's about more than just Holocaust education. Um, as a historian, I can say that I'm very disturbed by the general decline in the teaching of history around this nation. And I know that when um, our partners from Europe and um, other places abroad come, they are surprised because the United States does not have a national curriculum or national education standards. Um, and there are benefits and negatives to that, but just in most other countries there are standards. We leave things to state and local levels. So it's not a uniform thing. One of our goals at the museum is to lift the level of quality Holocaust education across the country by uh, training teachers, by facilitating regional cores uh, so that local teachers who are experienced, and they don't have to just be in history, they could be in a literature class, they could be in what we used to call civics, um, they could be a religious faith-based class, um, to enable them to work with the direct evidence of the Holocaust uh, and teach and facilitate in a responsible and meticulous way. One of the points I'd most like to make is that even people who think that they know about the Holocaust often talk about it in such a simplistic way as though it's some kind of morality tale where there's just you know pure evil and pure good. And obviously there is pure evil and good in the story of the Holocaust, but the vast majority of people who lived in Europe during the time were a mixture. Either were onlookers or were complicit in some ways and helpful in others. We had a special exhibit a few years ago exactly on this topic called Somewhere Neighbors, and I encourage you to look at our online version of it, which describes the way that everyday people had, everyday ordinary people had choices about whether to get involved, whether to stand by, and whether to facilitate. So it's about more than just numbers and statistics and date, it's dates, it's really about social cohesion and psychology. Thank you, and thank you for your leadership in this area. Uh, currently, only 12 states across the country require Holocaust education. And on Monday, I'm very proud that Chairwoman Maloney uh, introduced legislation to ensure that teachers ac across the country have access to the resources they need to teach about the Holocaust. But I do want to point out, you know, we can legislate all we want to fight hate, fight anti-Semitism. Uh, but the reality is it has to start in our hearts and our head. It requires leaders across our country 
leaders in the White House, the administration, in this body, in academia, and elsewhere to make sure that we are all fighting hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder to fight this. And, and Mr. Greenblatt, I'd like to turn to you for, uh, for uh, closing comments on my time here. Can you talk about some of your education initiatives and how important they are as well? Thank you for the question. The ADL is one of the leading providers in the United States of anti-bias, anti-hate content in schools. We, we reach over 1.5 million students, including many in Orange County and across Southern California. We think, indeed, education is the best antidote to intolerance. Teaching about the Holocaust, we've seen the studies. When students understand what happened in the Shoah, it leads to a greater awareness about anti-Semitism and a greater tolerance for people from minority groups. So we know it works. We need more of it. And let's hope the Senate passes the Never Again Education Act. Thank you very Thank much. You. I yield back. Thank you.